Hey there, my name is Lily Thomas and I am coming to you from my home in Westchester, New York, which is just north of Manhattan. And I was last seen on the Milwaukee Rep stage in 2012 in a little show called Blues in the Night at the Stagner Cabaret. And I was also lucky enough to be a part of Mark's inaugural show, Cabaret, in 2010. Um, and it was actually that show that I was pregnant with my first child, Annabelle, who is now turning nine next month, which is crazy to me. Um, I also have a son. His name is Jack and he is six years old and I am homeschooling the both of them, which is extremely difficult. Um, but I do have to say that I feel really lucky and appreciate every minute of it because I've spent the past couple of years performing a lot and I've missed a lot of homework time and I've missed a lot of almost every dinner. Um, and I've been too tired to appreciate the mornings that I do with them because of the show the night before. And, um, I really have been trying to keep a positive mind and focus on the amazing opportunity that I do have to spend all of this time with my children who are really exceptional human beings. And we've actually gone through um, a loss during this time of quarantine and we had to put our dog down, which was really difficult because um, of the obvious reasons, but also because we're forced to be home and we have no distractions and we are forced to be reminded that um, he's not there. And he was a huge part of our lives and was actually around while I was first at Milwaukee Rep and has been um, with me since before my children were and was their first sibling. So um, that's been really difficult for them. And the fact that we can be together as a family right now has been um, completely invaluable. Um, the show that I was doing right when the shelter in place took effect was called We're Gonna Die by Young Jean Lee at Second Stage in the City. And um, I was the standby. And it was a really, um, an extremely moving piece. When I received the script and I read it before my audition, I had an immediate connection to it. it. It's an unbelievably raw and uh, insightful, humane uh, piece that is about the acceptance and the understanding of the arc of a human being's life. And um, basically it starts out with the it's a one woman show with a band and it starts out with the woman turning towards the audience and recollecting her childhood memories and talking to the audience about, um, about wanting to find some sort of comfort for people who are in pain and for herself when she's in pain. And she goes back to the first time that she was in the playground and left out and that she feels isolated and lonely. And it was the first time that she couldn't fall asleep. And so her mother came in and sang her a lullaby, um, which is actually a lullaby that I sing to my children at night now. And this lullaby says, you're not the only one. And if you don't sleep tonight, it's all right. You'll sleep by and by. And um, that this is just for now. The feelings you're feeling are for now. And it, this too shall pass. I thought that this was extremely applicable to um, our current state and also these feelings of loneliness and isolation and pain and uh, worrying that we are all experiencing are addressed in this piece. And this, the way that the show kind of evolves is this understanding and this acceptance that the character goes through to know that everybody experiences pain and everybody experiences suffering. And who are you to think that um, this shouldn't happen to you? Um, and I think that's something that's amazing that's happening in our community right now is that we are all coming together knowing that 
everybody is facing hardship in some way or another. Um, and right before where I have decided to pick up and perform the piece, the singer, who is the main character, turns to the audience and says, so that's what I want to share with you tonight. Just some ordinary comforting things that have somehow managed to make me feel less alone when I was in that isolated place. And I'm sharing them with you in hopes that they make you feel less lonely when you're in pain, which I hope you're not. Okay, so a lot of people believe that the best way to not feel so alone is to find romance. But as many of y'all know, there are a lot of problems with that. One of the biggest ones being that not everybody can find it. I didn't find romance until after I'd graduated from college. In high school, I didn't date at all. And in college, I dated a series of alcoholics, none of whom were my boyfriend, which I knew because they would all tell me you're not my girlfriend. <laughs> but then I graduated from college and I sort of started to get my life together and I met this amazing guy named Henry. Henry was smart, he was funny, and he was really nice to me. And after about a year of dating, we moved in together. And it was right around this time that my parents decided to host a big family reunion at their house. And I was so excited. I'd always kind of been the black sheep of the family I have an older sister who has always been very successful and popular, yet not even she had ever brought home anyone as amazing as Henry. So I was really eager to go home and show him off. So we go to the reunion and everyone is really impressed with Henry. I mean, almost to an offensive extent. I was like, you guys, is it really that unbelievable that I managed to find an amazing boyfriend? But it was great. And I remember all the cousins were out in the backyard playing softball the way that we used to when we were kids. And the ball rolled under the bushes by the kitchen door and I went to go get it. And the kitchen door was open and my mom was in the kitchen with one of my aunts. And I heard my mom tell my aunt that she could never feel the same way about me as she did about my sister. That night I told Henry what had happened and he was really nice about it, but he was an only child, so we didn't understand. And then he fell asleep. And as I was laying there, this is what I thought to myself. When life tells me I blow, and a million in pain, you try to comfort me, but it doesn't go away. You tell me that you love me before you fall asleep And as I lie away with my worries on repeat I try to think of something that can ease my grief And the answer comes right to me while I listen to you breathe I still have you You're in my bed, you hold my head until I'm dead That I lost my mind I woke up in a panic Of overwhelming pride I realized how close we are To madness and despair The truth of my own weakness Was more than I could bear But then I saw you next to me When I turned on the light And I reached for you And in your sleep you held me Until I'm dead If you die first I'll be alone But until then I have a home
the kind of a week where everything goes wrong You don't deserve the things that have been happening to you I want to make them go away But what can I do? I try to cheer you up But I can't fix anything Life is what it is All I can do course a year later Henry dumps me it was one of those horrible things where you feel the person pulling away so you cling on even more desperately and it goes on for way too long and it's awful and eventually he had to pull the plug on the day that he moved out I told him that I couldn't bear to watch him move out all of his things so I was going to a friend's house but before I left I made Henry promise me that he would rearrange all of the furniture so there weren't any gaps where all his things used to be because it would just be too painful for me to have to go in and see that. So Henry promised he would do this for me and I went to my friend's house. When I returned that night, I saw that Henry had rearranged everything perfectly. He'd even dusted so there weren't any marks where his things used to be. The only problem was that we had had this giant widescreen television that had been the center focal point of our living room and of course, he took it with him because it was his. But on the table where the TV used to be, he left a doily and two candlesticks. <laughs> you guys, I saw that. And I just burst into tears. And then I ran into the bedroom. And I saw that half of the books were missing from the bookshelves. And that's when it hit me. Now I live here alone.
I'm coming 